Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to our news broadcast. The topic of our next story is very exciting. I'm here today with Susanna, our program's science correspondent, to discuss the effects of hydroxychloroquine. She has been speaking with students at McMaster University who have been reviewing the latest evidence about hydroxychloroquine and its use for COVID-19. We've seen plenty of celebrities and world leaders talk about hydroxychloroquine, so today Susanna will share what she has learned with us. Hi, Gershon. First and foremost, I want to thank you for having me here with you. To jump right into today's topic, hydroxychloroquine is what is known as an anti-malarial drug. This drug has been approved for medicinal use by the Food and Drug Administration. So what exactly is it used for? Well, originally it was used to treat malaria, but later it was found to also be helpful for autoimmune conditions such as lupus or rheumatoid arthritis because the medication helps modulate the immune system. It is commonly prescribed for one of these two conditions. Originally it was used as emergency medication for COVID-19, I believe. Is that correct? Yes, it is. The Food and Drug Administration did originally approve it to be used in emergency situations for patients with COVID-19. However, after more research was conducted, they decided to revoke this authorization due to the side effects associated with taking this medicine. Even though the authorization was revoked, why was hydroxychloroquine proposed as a treatment for COVID-19? That's a good question. Scientists have identified a few possible ways that hydroxychloroquine might play a role in preventing or treating COVID-19. But before I get into that, it might be helpful to explain how the novel coronavirus infects human cells. The official name of the COVID-19 virus is SARS-CoV-2, and this molecule is covered in what we call spike proteins. Spike proteins are what viruses use to latch onto proteins called receptors on the cells in your body allowing the virus to infect that cell. In the case of the novel coronavirus, one of the targets of spike proteins is the receptor angiotensin-converting enzyme 2 in your lungs, which is also called ACE2 for short. I see. So essentially, spike proteins on the coronavirus are like keys that unlock cells, letting the virus get inside. Exactly. So, this leads us back to hydroxychloroquine. It has been found that hydroxychloroquine may also bind to ACE2 receptors. When this happens, hydroxychloroquine acts as an extra security system for ACE2, causing changes that prevent the spike proteins on the coronavirus from attaching to it and causing infection. Further, the known properties of hydroxychloroquine that make it useful as a drug for malaria and autoimmune disorders might also have an effect in preventing COVID-19. When hydroxychloroquine attaches to a cell, it makes that cell less acidic than it is normally. This helps prevent the transmission of virus from one cell to another. Well, based on this evidence, might hydroxychloroquine be able to treat and prevent COVID-19? Theoretically, yes. When hydroxychloroquine makes cells less acidic, this impacts the activity of certain immune proteins, including proteins called cytokines. Under normal circumstances, cytokines help the body fight off viruses. However, in some cases, cytokines may cause the body to start attacking its own tissues as well. This is called a cytokine storm, and it is thought to be what causes acute respiratory distress syndrome in severe cases of COVID-19. It is thought that hydroxychloroquine might prevent these cytokine storms from occurring and stop cases of COVID-19 from becoming too serious. So based on what you have just told us, it seems that hydroxychloroquine is a very promising candidate for preventing and treating COVID-19. Unfortunately, it's not quite so simple. It's important to note that the theoretical mechanisms that I have just talked about have largely come from in vitro studies, which means that the studies were conducted by looking at the coronavirus and hydroxychloroquine in a lab rather than in humans. When we look at the results of clinical trials studying hydroxychloroquine for COVID-19 in human subjects, the results aren't so encouraging. So far, no meaningful difference has been seen in the number of coronavirus cases between those who did and who did not take hydroxychloroquine, and a number of serious side effects have also been observed when individuals took hydroxychloroquine for this purpose. I see. 
So although hydroxychloroquine may theoretically be able to treat COVID, so far in humans it does not produce the desired results. That's correct. Now you also mentioned something about side effects. Could you expand on that? Yes. Like all drugs, hydroxychloroquine can produce some adverse effects in certain individuals. From December 2019 to March 2020, 385 adverse events were reported to the FDA. In addition, it is believed that adverse events are largely underreported, so this number is expected to be greater. Due to the wide variety of different side effects that can be caused by this drug, it must be closely monitored. Interesting. So what kind of side effects could users experience? Well, hydroxychloroquine has the potential to cause side effects that impact various organ systems, both short and long term. In the most recent safety review of hydroxychloroquine conducted in June 2020, the FDA reported adverse effects impacting the cardiac, nervous, immune, and musculoskeletal systems, in addition to disorders affecting connective tissue, lymphatics, the liver, and the gallbladder. Complications impacting mental health were also reported. Cardiac disorders were the most reported adverse events. In fact, because of these cardiac events, a drug safety communication was put out by the FDA that cautioned against the use of hydroxychloroquine for COVID-19 outside of a hospital or clinical trial setting. When it comes to the cardiac system, hydroxychloroquine can cause conduction disorder, which causes problems with the electrical systems that control heart rate and rhythm. Effects reported from previous scientific studies and literature include rash, nausea, headache, and weight gain. Some of these side effects are irreversible and can even be fatal. These side effects seem very serious. Would this drug be safe to use during pregnancy? The FDA advises against the use of this drug during pregnancy, except in cases where the benefits outweigh the risks. According to the literature, hydroxychloroquine is known to pass through the placenta and has the potential to cause fetal damage. In rare cases, it can also cause abortion. Thank you for sharing what you have learned with us. What else should we be aware about regarding safety concerns of hydroxychloroquine? Well, many experts and doctors caution that both the dosage and period of use of hydroxychloroquine contribute to the risk of experiencing adverse effects. Therefore, it is very important for medical professionals to be strictly managing a patient's use of hydroxychloroquine and monitoring their reaction to the drug. No one should be taking hydroxychloroquine without the advice of their healthcare provider. So there you have it. Although hydroxychloroquine is used to treat other conditions such as malaria and autoimmune disorders, it has not been proven to be effective for humans in fighting COVID-19. So because of the adverse effects that have been found, the FDA cautions against using hydroxychloroquine for COVID-19 outside of hospital settings or clinical trials. Currently, there are 260 registered clinical trials investigating hydroxychloroquine for COVID-19, which may yield new information about the safety and efficacy of this treatment in the future. In the meantime, however, the evidence indicates that it is not a good idea for members of the general public to take hydroxychloroquine for the purposes of preventing or curing COVID-19. Remember, when starting any new treatment or medication, one should always consult their healthcare provider and follow government health guidelines. Thank you very much for speaking with us today, Susanna. You're welcome, and thank you for having me.